some of these people drive studies like this and fund things like this. Yeah, because they have an agenda. And the agenda. Okay, vets. Oh my God. You want to go, vets? Can we just can we just do the always apologize? Um, hey, you guys can harp on dog trainers using punishment, right? Remember my continuum. When you stop, when you increase your staff and you stop holding dogs down and to give them vaccinations and you stop pulling dogs into your back room and you never use punishment, vets are out there talking about dog trainers, but yet they're doing all the stuff. Yeah, but we're they're, vets. They're applying force. We're vets. We can do that. Oh, you can do that? Why? To neuter a dog? To, to take dog's testicles off? When it's convenient for them? Yeah. Okay. Vets can, vets, I will literally listen to them when they stop, when they practice what they preach. Stop pulling a dog into the back room. Stop holding a dog down for neutering or giving vaccinations. Surgery is one thing. Dog is about to die is one thing. But that's not, and increase your staff. Oh, you can't increase your staff because you want to make money? Yeah, I get it. I get it, vets. But quit coming out with position statements. So about, you're being, you're, jo you're kind I'm, of joking, but you're saying don't be a hypocrite, basically, right? Am I joking? I don't know. I'm not joking. <laughs> I have a real, real problem with it. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Beckman Airlines, it is my pleasure to welcome you aboard. The use of approved portable electronic devices is now permitted. For your safety, please keep your seatbelt fastened at all times. All right, man, we're back. All right, Beckman Unleashed podcast number six. My name is Joel Beckman. This is Eric. How you guys doing? All right, we've got a lot of good stuff planned for you guys today. We're going to get into a lot of topics, talk about what's been going on. Yeah, I'm man. Good? What's been going on in your world like the last All week right. or so? The first thing was I did a video today. Actually, I, I did the sessions today, which I do every Tuesday when we film this thing. And I've been working out. And oh, I no. thought I was looking kind of buff on the videos. <laughs> so if you see my videos and I'm looking buffer and tanner, I was like pretty impressed with how I was looking. Not orange, but tan. Right? Oh, yeah. People have been talking about how I look orange. I don't think I do. It's because this light, but maybe comment on how, if I'm looking better okay, physically. I'm hoping you're in pretty good shape, man. I'm in all right shape, but I, I, I'm getting in better shape. And you're working outdoors. I've been working. Yes. Every day of your life, right? Well, this, when I do the sessions, yeah, I'm outdoors and with the dogs. Yes. Mm. So that was just one thing that I thought about when I saw my video playback from my session today. So I was like, oh, I'm looking all right. If I do say so myself, because I wasn't looking very uh, uh, in shape before, I don't believe. Were you, do you feel That's just scrawny? my opinion. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I started really working out. Me and my wife, my kids, we're all doing well. My kids always worked out. My kids are crazy, but my wife too. I was like the one that was out of shape. Yeah. How are you guys working out? What are you doing? We go to this like fighting gym, but they have strength and conditioning classes. It's like kettlebells. And my kids do like jujitsu and boxing and I'm going to get into boxing, I think. But it's mainly Maybe like bodybuilding just... for you. Yeah. My son bought my son does like the bodybuilding poses. <laughs> like I'm like, bro, you actually watch bodybuilding. He like does the poses. That's impressive. It's weird though. He's like 11 or something. He's 12, but he it's not like he's like flexing. He's like doing bodybuilding poses. And I'm like. You don't want to look like that, right? And he's kind of like, no. He's it's, got it's, good it's, genetics, though. He does. He has crazy. It's because my wife. Yeah, she's. My wife shredded. has crazy genetics. That's true. Like crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So before you guys have seen my wife. Yeah. So, what was going on? You so... can see him in the, her in the picture right now on YouTube. It's my little circle picture. My family. Do you know what I'm saying? I do. I do. Okay, go ahead. I know so you don't like the that. video that we put out on Sunday. That was the double trouble video, right? Yes. So how did that go? I thought the video was great and people seem to like it. Um, well, I noticed you had a comment about the shaming of people. You I just, pinned you a comment and I said, do not shame these people because the video intro 
is of me telling them in no uncertain terms the thing they've done wrong. And so the commenters and the viewers will sometimes take my cue, generally not my subscribers because they know what's up, but videos go well beyond subscribers, obviously. And I said, there's no shaming of these people. I can shame them because I know them, because they're sitting there, because I see things and I don't shame them, but I can tell them the truth about themselves and their dog because they have come to me for that. Mm -hmm. to random people behind their computer, it's not helpful. You might think you're doing good, but you're not because the bottom line is I have already done what I said, what needed to be said. I don't know if I've ever held back on a client and telling them the truth, even if they don't want to hear it. I am doing that job. And sometimes it's cut out, but I'm doing the job of telling them what's up and they, and, and it's my job to do. I don't know. It's, it's a, I, I don't love, I'm, 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 I don't love. And actually I, I very much dislike societal internet shaming. I think it's a, I think it's a very bad thing. I now have a little bit of a voice on a YouTube channel. And so I'm going to try to do my part to not let it happen in my world. That's fair. I think also, you get to know these people that are clients and are visiting, right? And then we know from the comments that they're actually reading the comments, of course, because they're in the video. And so that is true. The shaming when you know that the person being shamed is in there is kind of that is fortunate. That is very true. That and that's not the driving force. I wouldn't say is the fact that they're going to see the comments. Uh, that is a factor, but the driving force is I don't want to see the comments. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I. These, these people, I have a relationship with these people that's a very, they sit across from me. People cry in that office and I cut it out sometimes or, I mean, I don't know if I should, but I'll sometimes cut it out for their own protection. But I have a relationship with them that is, that is sort of personal. The person behind their keyboard at home does not have that relationship with them. So they shouldn't see it. And I don't like to see it. The what, comment. What do you think about like, so you got the bullying side of things where just in the same way that you wouldn't want to see a dog continue to get bullied and abused by another dog, you would want to step in, right? That's a good that's point. part of kind of who you are. Yes. Okay. That's a good point. It is kind of bullying in a way. And I don't want to use that term too loosely because my, ch my kids bullying now is a different thing than when we were kids bullying. When you were <laughs> my, my son, I'll be like joking with him and he'll be like, he'll say it jokingly, but it's weird. The state of mind, he'll go, you're bullying me. And I'm like, I'm bullying. I'm it's not <laughs> bullying. Like what's your definition of bullying? You're kid? getting shoved in the locker. Yeah, yeah exactly. Saying something. But you're right. There, there is a little bit of a bullying aspect to it. Um, what I said in that pinned comment on my last video was whatever the term is, and I don't know if I did it correctly, but I said in that comment, I said, "He who, he who lives in a glass house shouldn't throw stones," yeah. and it's so true. Like if you've trained your dog perfectly and you've trained many dogs over your life, maybe I'll let that slide because I can just tell by the comment that you're like some dog savant but the Jeez. comments of sh shaming people comments are not by dog savants they're by whoops i hit the camera they're by you know some dude or some lady who thinks they're the greatest dog trainer ever i think that quote is as you oh. tease me for what is it my quote issues i think that's kind of a derivative of the bible quote i think it is that he who is free of sin cast the first stone i could be wrong no but, but there's a glass houses yeah it's it's yeah it's a derivative of it yeah 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 but I get your point. That was a, that was a really good video, though, and it actually picked up. I think people liked it a lot. Yeah, ranks number two. Not that anyone cares about how YouTube ranks things, but mm -hmm. I, and I don't even understand it. It's like ranks number two. Oh, two, so out, two out, out of ten. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I, I don't get it. I think it doesn't help when we come up with titles like two insane dogs in one house." Coincidence? <laughs> like I know we lead we lead the witness a little bit there. Yeah. No, I agree. Guilty. I, I agree, but you know. Yeah. So if you don't mind, um, you had made a comment on our last podcast about boundary training. I asked you, oh. could you take Prince and have him just stay within the yard 
and you looked at me, you're like, of course, of course I can do that. My, but then you never talked about boundary training. And then I, I was like, oh, I want to hear about the boundary training. Okay. So we're going to get into some dog training stuff, which we don't do a ton on this podcast, but that's a good thing to do because I'm not going to make a video probably on boundary training. I might, but let's do it right now. Okay. Uh, and you don't want to spend the whole time talking about bodybuilding either. You know, I shouldn't have even started the podcast talking about bodybuilding. It's kind of a weird way to start, but, uh, okay. Boundary training first for anyone who doesn't know what is boundary training. And we talked about last time because e electronic fences and electronic mm -hmm. collars, they were talked about. And then I said, my way is pretty good too. Actually, I said, I love my way of boundary training. So we're going to get into it right now. So if you want to train your dog, there's, in my opinion, there's two main types of boundary training people need because I went to thousands of homes before I ever started YouTube. It is kind of stay within an unfenced yard and stay with the out, out of the kitchen. Those are kind of, and I, I have to narrow this talk down. I can't talk about every brown boundary that any dog's going to ever come across in life and how to train them to stay with the distractions on the other side of the boundary. So we're going to go with two, two, two ways. One is let's start with the kitchen first. Okay. So any boundary training, you need a separation in the, in the, um, the substrate or in the floor. So it needs to go from yard to sidewalk or for the house. It needs to go from, or it helps to go from hardwood to tile so that the dog can see the difference in the ground and understand that area I can't can't go in, this area is acceptable for me to stay in. So you can imagine in your brain, if you tried to train your dog to stay in half of your yard, how difficult that would be because it's a sea of grass. Mm -hmm. What is the demarcation line that your dog visually or feeling on its paws needs to separate. It'd be very difficult, right? Where's the visual yeah. marker? There's no cue, right? There's no cue if you want to say it like that. Yeah. There's no demarcation line would be probably the best way. So kitchen. You want to keep your dog out of the kitchen because counter surfing is a pain in the behind. And I understand why they get up on the counter. It's an unvariable schedule for reinforcement where they occasionally get something and then it's a powerful thing, right? When something's on a various but schedule of reinforcement. So you're going to be in your kitchen. And your dog is going to wander his little behind from, let's say there is a demarcation line. Right when the dog takes a step from the good area of the kitchen to the area they can't go, boop, right when the paw touches that area, you're going to go, you're going to walk into them and you're going to go, ah, uh -uh, and you're going to walk into them and you are going to just your move is going to go, ah, uh -uh, and they're going to, right when they touch, touch that area, you go, ah, uh -uh, and you walk into them and they're going to take a step back. And then right when they take a step back onto the good area, the hardwood, let's say, you are then going to lessen the pressure. Okay. It's called negative reinforcement. And then you're going to go back and then they're going to go pop, pop, pop. And they're going to wander in right when that first paw barely touches the ground. Uh -uh. And then they're going to back up and sit in the good area. And you're going to do it over and over and over again. And then you might say, well, Joel, where is the reinforcement come in? The reinforcement should never be you in the kitchen with treats and reinforcing them right outside of the bad area and giving them treats where you're coming from the good, the bad area, which is in the kitchen and giving them the treats while they're sitting on the edge. Why? Reinforce, reinforcement draws animals towards it. So if you have treats in there, you're technically reinforcing them when they're sitting outside of the kitchen. But what they're doing is they're sort of being drawn in there with eyes and with smell. They're sort of being drawn in. If you wanted to do it right, you would have one of your family members behind them in the living room. Then when they're sitting there nicely, the other family member would call them. They would flip around. They would go the other way away from the kitchen, get reinforced that way. So now you can think they have split focus. They're kind of like, I want to go in that kitchen because that's where the food is. But sometimes I get called behind me and random dude gives me a piece of chicken behind me. So they're now being drawn two different ways. I can give you examples in all animal training about gravitation towards reinforcement and how it's a problem. And a lot of experienced trainers don't understand the animal's sort of moving their head when you're shaping a behavior, you can get this weird head movement from animals because they're looking at your treat bag or they're looking at the fish with killer well training 
and you sort of create this weird like head movement within a behavior because they're looking at at the reinforcement seeking yeah. okay so so you, i had i was wondering why they said no kitchen and i was thinking like hot pots and pans and you were uh, thinking no just keeping them off the counter yeah i mean i don't i mean i've never heard a story of a dog jumping up and getting burned yeah no it's mainly just like i'm trying to make dinner and my dog's under me yeah you know yeah. Uh, so if you don't have um like my kitchen is all hardwood with an island that's what a lot of people have so you have to have they have to be able to visually see like countertops and island right here and that's the demarcation line there's no change in the flooring it's just their per their peripheral vision is like oh there's like an invisible line from the countertops does that make sense it's like a wall it's like a wall an invisible wall so they they have to be able to see it okay now let's go to the yard the yard is a little tougher you know why because they're being drawn out of your yard and this was your question about prints to dogs on the other side of the yard to other th things that they want to go to so now you're gonna have a leash you're gonna walk your dog let's say you want to keep them in the grass area and not go to the driveway and the sidewalk you're gonna walk them and they're just gonna go do, 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 and they're just gonna walk on a leash from your yard and they're gonna take a step right on the con on the concrete you want them to think that that concrete is a hot stove and they want to come back it's lava Okay, so they're going to walk and they're just going to wander out there bah, 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 and they're going to take one step on from that grass to concrete. You're then going to give them a little correction and you're going to walk them back to the yard. Then you're going to walk them back and they're going to take a step from the yard to, and you're going to give them a little correction. You're going to walk the other way. And then the third time they're going to walk to that concrete. They're going to get from the yard. They're going to look at you. Now you can see they're hesitating from going from the yard because the behavior is stay in the yard. Then you're going to add distractions and you can start doing like a sit stay in the grass and then you can start to leave, but never call them from the grass to the sidewalk or the street or whatever. You want to go back to them. I would then go back to the middle of your yard and reinforce them. Remember that whole thing of don't call them to you because they're going to be pulled out towards the street mm -hmm. and then you keep doing that and then if you want to go on a walk with them you can sort of have them get to the grass line have them do a sit at the edge of the grass then you can release them okay let's go on our walk so they're really understanding only do they come out of that yard with an okay and a release i don't think it's that complicated you just have to understand some principles the mm -hmm. stove principle the reinforcement away from the way they're gravitating the mm. opposite way of the way they want to go and then never let them and then adding distractions so then you you being in the middle of the street is a they're being pulled out there but you, or or the food in the kitchen they're being pulled in there you just can't let them anymore just wander into these areas there has to be demarcation did you ever get in does that make sense when you were younger did you ever have a dog that was more free to roam that could maybe go beyond the yard my dog history of owning dogs was like i moved out when i was 19 we had like two dogs before that and like it was just kind of like i loved them but i like never trained them and you know were they locked within a fence or shut within? no a fence? they were house dogs and backyard dogs but like they would get out and they would just run away and we had to get in the car and go get them and you know yeah, it's the same thing with cats where they end up leaving and then they come back and yeah. now they have kittens. Yeah. Right? Or puppies. Bro, can I tell you a story? Yeah. I years ago I took this dog home and I used to drop off and pick up boarding trains. And I took this dog home. And this dog, when he was with us, you could tell he like loved his mom and like he just wanted to be with his mom all the time. And she had like three dogs. Her house flooded. I don't even know if it was a board train. And I get to the house and I have like three dogs to take in. So I left one of them was in the back and I put the other two and I'm like, this dog is going to go from my car, which was in the driveway with the back open straight to the house because I just knew how much this dog loved this, this lady. Mm -hmm. And I left the back open. I put, I leashed up the other two dogs. I start to walk them and I just look back and the dog who I was like, no, this guy's going to run right up to her front door because he loves this lady so much. That dog jumped out of my car and just 
sprinted down the street as fast as it could possibly go. I just opened her door, put the dogs in and started running after this dog. And I'm like, I can't drop a dog off and have it just immediately run away. It's not a good luck. No, it's bad luck. And it sprinted down the street and I just started chasing the dog. I ran after that dog for like five miles, maybe three miles. Wow. That's Bro, a long time. Well, yeah, I just, I would just, I was crazy. He just like left. Not a good advertisement what, for board What and kind train. of a uh, In my defense, dog it was, was it? Probably 15 years ago. I don't know. Next dog. Yeah, there was a, uh, what was it? A Siberian Husky that was running out here. And then it went on to community. So I got in my truck and went to go get it because I don't want to get run over. Nice of you. And then I got it in the truck. Oh, you did. And then I took a video from my family like, hey, I adopted a dog. What do you think? Um, but it was safe. So the reason I was bringing up the um, kittens and the puppies and all this kind of the wandering animal that you may have. Yeah. Is because we had a comment about um like neutering and spaying and stuff like that. And it made me, so I wanted to ask you about that. I don't know a ton about it, but I'm sure, you know, a fair amount. So, and I know people in the comments ask you about like, should I neuter? Should I not neuter? Like when should I neuter them? Like all kinds of stuff around neutering. Neutering. Neutering is a big topic and I get it all the time and I'm going to get, you want me to get into it? Neutering, obviously. And care? spaying. No, let's do it. So okay. Can you give a high level like what is it, what it is not? Neutering is cutting off of the testicles of a of a dog. Spaying is, if I'm correct, removing the ovaries and the uterus of a female dog. Okay. So so that's like for a male, that's like castration, essentially. Yeah. And, and for a female, it's like a hysterectomy more or less. Yeah. I don't know why they don't like just tie the tubes. I don't know. Maybe I'm not going to expensive. In our apology segment last week was <laughs> there's vets involved and they'll probably be again, but maybe someone can comment on why they don't just tie tubes generally and why they remove a very vital organ to a female. I don't get it. Hmm. Maybe there's a reason. But yeah. But we don't know. I would guess that there is there is a reason, but it's not a reason that they're proud of. That would be my guess. Do you guess. know about this stuff? You're Man, doing coy? What? <laughs> there's, we can, we there's can cut it out if, if it's 50 not good. years ago, when they were doing this, dogs weren't what they are today. They probably just haven't evolved with the times. I mean, why would they why why in the world would spaying still be taking the uterus out? Can someone explain that to me? Yeah, the tubes should handle it, right? I don't know. That's it seems like there is a less invasive, less removing of an organ that has that that, that, that gives you um, 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 hormones that are important in your life. I don't know. I'm not going to sit here and act. There's things I don't know, but there's also common sense that goes, there might be a better way and maybe we should change with the times vet industry and start to do something less. I don't know. But I'm not going to sit here and, and say that for sure. Cause you know, is it like the frontal lobotomy of the old days rather than bottle in front of me? <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, that's, that changed, right? Yeah. That, that changed. But I mean, I don't know if it's that severe. I mean, taking yeah. the part of the brain out seems more severe than a uterus, but I don't know. Seems like, seems like they should maybe look at a different way to do that. How strong is the vet lobby? Are they going to come after us like the Amish and who else? The, the vet Europeans. lobby. I'm more worried about the vet lobby than the uh, Amish for obvious reasons. Or the reasons. doggy daycare lobby. <laughs> There's no such thing. Yeah, the vet lobby. They have they have a full organization. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm challenging you guys a little bit. Not saying anyone we're going to see this. You know, something to think about. Something to think about. Okay, so spaying and neutering. I'm going to get into neutering more. I've already, I, I can tell you a little bit of behavioral differences with spaying, but it's mainly neutering. Okay. Here's the main thing about spaying and neutering, in my opinion. They were way, made that way with those parts. Okay. Now, different than ear cropping and tail docking, those parts, the uterus and the testicles, have hormones that are important to health 
and emotional state of being. So the argument for not doing it would be they were made that way. Okay? That's that's like a giant argument for not doing it. But there are other arguments too. And what I say is like, follow the behavior. So there's an argument to be made. Okay, I took Prince to a dog park two months ago. It was not a pleasant experience. You don't normally recommend much in the way of dog parks. Right? I, if you, there's two things that have, uh, my opinions have changed a little bit over the years. Like literally only two things. And it is dog parks and is maybe one thing that I'll talk about next week. Okay, if you remind me. Okay. And I'm not anti-dog park still. Many trainers are anti-dog park. I am not. If, if a client comes to me and says, I want to go to a dog park, I'm going to try to do what I can so they can go to the dog park. And I'm not going to tell them dog parks are the worst place in the history of the world, right? I am not their mommy and daddy and people have free will. And if they want me to get their dog good for a dog park, I'm not going to talk them out of it usually. Actually, sometimes I do because I go, your dog can't go. You're going to hurt somebody else. Mm -hmm. But if their dog's nice, blah, blah, blah. So my, my, I took Prince to a dog park. My God, Prince is unneutered. That's the whole point of this story. He walks in, he's cruising, he's doing his thing. Three dogs are like, what's up, dude? It's they, a problem. Yes. There was no scraps. I go there five more times. We're going to have one out of five times. Prince is going to get into a fight. And it ain't Prince's fault. He's unneutered and he's confident. And dogs don't like that. You have to choose. And, and people come out all the time and they say, I want to go to dog parks, but a vet told me to uh, not neuter my dog for two years, which props to the vet. Okay. They are not like they were 15 years ago, which is just spay and neuter your pets to prevent overpopulation, right? That's just not how it is anymore. But the vet told me two years and I'm looking at the dog and the dog puts out a vibe or the dog is highly sexual. And I'm like, but you can't go to the dog park. And they're like, yeah, but my vet told, I'm like, you're going to have to neuter your dog to go to a dog park. And like, but my vet told me, I'm like, you got to make a choice here. You can't have this both ways. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Who are you going to listen to? Who are you going to listen to? And I'm not saying you listen. Fine. Don't neuter your dog, but you can't go to a dog park. Your dog is, how gro gross can I get on this podcast? Just don't cuss so that we can put your the dog check mark is on there. obsessively licking the anus of another male dog. It's gross. You're going to go to a dog park and let your dog do this and we can stop it. But you, there's a drive in some of these unneutered one year old dogs, one and a half year old dogs that is way more than then we can train out of them in a short period of time. It's going to take time. Your dog is obsessively licking the genitals and trying to hump other dogs. You think this isn't dog park. This isn't cool. You got to choose. So you made a comment about dog is naturally a certain way, right? Yeah. yeah. Can you get into the fact that isn't it true that these males at the dog park are also a certain way? And that they're, I'm not saying that it's okay to fight, but oh. they have their own way of sure. probably saying, I, I get the top mating preference, Yeah. right? How does that yeah. work? Well, we live in a society, dude. We don't live in the wild. I've said it in the video like a month ago. I go, hey, the best way for these two dogs is to go figure it out. And one ends up on top and the other loses. That's the best way, but that's not the world we live in. We don't live in a world where you can go to a dog park and get in fights and see who's the boss. That's not the world we live in. Maybe it should be. It ain't. Are we ever going to drop a name of a popular dog fighter who got in trouble or no? No. Okay. Just check, just check with you. No, I don't think so. Okay. Um, so you can't go to the dog park and get in fights. Okay. But that's not the only. Okay. So they were made that way. There's got to be a good thing, whether it's nature or God or whatever you want to say, they were made a certain way with certain things intact. It is good to keep those things intact, but you have to follow the behavior. I've talked about two main behaviors, right? Dogs wanting to fight your unneutered dog. Your dog, it's not your dog's fault. It doesn't matter if it's your dog's fault. It's still a fight. And the other is the sexual behavior that unneutered dogs, by the time they hit a year, start to exhibit. And not all of them by any means but they start to do things that are uncool in public. And I'm, I, I can fix it. 
over time, can you fix it without coming to me or doing a board and train? I don't know. You're going to mark the behavior. You're going to grab the dog. You can't hump that dog. You're going to do it over and over again. The problem is the drive is such a strong drive. It's going to take time to get rid of if you ever get rid of it. Imagine the drive. You know what the drive is, right? It's a sexual drive. Yeah. It's sexual like- drives are not easily quelled. They are deep in the brain of people and of dogs. Okay. So one of the other things is reading the studies, which I've read on neutering. Let's get into spaying in a minute of neutering. I, UC Davis has a giant medical med, uh, veterinary school. I've been there. Okay. They did a, a, like apparently an exhaustive study. I tried to read the study. And at the end of it, you're like, I don't under, uh, basically throughout the studies, like talk to your vet. Because yeah. these studies, they're like, oh, with this breed, it was, you yeah. know, cancer was higher and now neuter dogs. And then with this breed, it was less. And like, it's not nearly as informative as you would think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I remember when we were looking into the details of those studies, what yeah. was that, a year ago? Yeah. And it was breaking it down by dog type, yeah. size especially, right? Yeah. Uh, is there negative things that come from? Dogs being too big that are neutered or not neutered. Oh, because isn't it a bone thing? Is didn't it say yeah. it was a bone thing? And that that's very real. Is like their heads when you neuter them too young, their heads don't get as big on males. So I like the two year, and they don't. They might not grow as much. Like like there's real advantages yeah. to it. But sorry to cut you off. No, you're good. You have to judge in your for you, it's your own life. You want to go to the dog park. There's real problems. You want to have just friends over with our neutered males? There could be real problems. Like you have to, everything is a cost benefit analysis and neutering is the, is a perfect example of that. Yeah. I think so. The testosterone supposedly helps with bone density. I'm sure there's people in the comments that can let us know about this, but I believe that's the case in humans. I did not get a medical degree, so I don't know for sure, Mm. but I do think that was part of the study from UC Davis was that so maybe as you get bigger as a dog the the need to have bigger stronger bones to hold up your body might be more than like a chihuahua might not need the same yeah. frame you know so it might not be as but so anyways they got into it so it wasn't yeah. a clear cut decision no. it was what type of dog do you have and we'll give you the data which i do think is a very honest way of looking at it wasn't like this is the way it's yeah, done yeah, yeah. it was like well it's complicated yeah it is complicated and I'll just go back. I mean, I'm going to, Prince has not been neutered. My first dog was neutered. Bosco was neutered at nine months. We got into his, how he died last, last episode and he died of bone cancer. Why did he get bone cancer? I don't know. Was he neutered too young? It's possible. We don't know. Did he, um, vaccinations? It's possible. There's a lot of possibilities. Yeah, we don't. I don't know. We don't know, but I do know. Did he just get bone cancer? It's possible. Yeah. A lot of people in the comments, I read the comments last week. Yeah. A lot of people had dogs that had bone cancer. So I'm not saying that's not uncommon. I don't know anything about it, but I was surprised at the number of people that had dogs that died of bone cancer. I thought that this thing with uh, Bosco was like a new, you know, rare thing, but apparently it's not. Sarco, it's, I forget what it's called. Yeah, it's and 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 leaving animals and it, leaving them with hormones to go through their body and the way they were made, it seems like a very powerful thing to me. But also, I'm a dog trainer, so I can I can manage those problems as they arise from having an unneutered male. And many people can't. Many people get dogs because they want to go dog parks or live in a population center, and they want to have their dog run with other dogs. And it's just not always feasible if your dog is highly sexual or other dogs hate your dog because he's neutered and unneutered intact we'll say um yeah. the other there there's sort of another aspect to this which i'm completely forgetting as i said that right. so do you ahead. mind if i ask you a question please so oh, i, I, I want to start thinking about when you're when you're talking about the one side the societal thing we don't live in the wild is what you said we don't yeah. live in the wild now you could also think, well, with this being true, what about the pros that come from neutering? So 
what are the downside impacts of potentially an unbelievable number of dogs in the streets, whatever you call them, free range or, or whatever. Does that make yeah, sense? you don't want to hear my answer on that because a person that I respect wrote a post about this um, and he basically broke down like, and you can believe this or not, I was a little torn on what he said, but he's like, there's no, now that we, we neuter dogs constantly, there didn't seem to be any change in the number of dogs out in the world. You think, remember Bob Barker, spay and neuter your pet to prevent yeah. overpopulation? Like that was a thought for a long time. I just, you think it would be true. It just didn't seem to be true. <laughs> you would think a bunch of unneutered dogs running around would make there be more dogs. And I guess there would be, but it didn't have the change I think people thought it would. Think There's about it. There's a limiting number, right? There's resources and things that are going to drive oh. that down probably, right? Like, well, like in you the can't wild, have an unlimited there would be. number. I don't they know. You have to get fed. Yeah, I don't know. It just didn't seem to... It wasn't I, compelling, right? So my point is the argument of... And well, you'll see it in the comments. You'll see after this episode and after any time I mention this, you are going to have people that are like, you have to neuter your dog so there's not unwanted dogs in the world. And it seems to make sense. But in a way, I don't know if it's true. And this guy I respect very much basically said and spelled it out and said, it just, it didn't, it didn't work. But you think it would work. Spay your dog so they don't have babies so there's not unwanted dogs. It's a compelling argument. I'm There's compelling arguments in the world that just for some reason don't turn out to yeah. be the way it seems like it would be. Trust your eyes first, right? Yeah. Did you see a bunch of when now people are not neutering their dogs anymore? Very much. Yeah, a change has happened in the last 10 years and I don't see on, uh, dogs running the streets. I don't see any more dogs than I ever saw. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I have a... I don't know. I don't understand. I don't understand it. I have a con, a con on neutering and spaying. You want to hear it? Yeah. So we spayed, spayed, in past tense, spayed my Bengal cat. Yeah. Greatest cat of all time. Now what are you going to do? Can't have more, can't have more ISAs because the lineage is, that, is over. Oh, it's over. Dude. Like Bosco. Prince. No, Bosco. Bosco, but Bosco I, was neutered, right? I know, but I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have bred him because I never thought about it. I just have never thought about I haven't thought about breeding my dog till two years ago or three years ago. You're like, you should be Prince. And I'm like, oh yeah, maybe I should to, to carry, carry on the lines. I never thought about it, but you're right. If I would have neutered Prince three years ago at a year, I would have been so bummed. Yeah. You sound kind of anti neuter. I kind of am. I kind of am like these things are important. Those yeah. things those things hanging down but they're important things yeah you do change you ch you change the behavior right in the psychology of the dog right and in that, the drives right yeah and i don't even mind the behavioral change so much as i mind the health change there's got they were made that way they there's 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 hormones that are released throughout their life. Like when you mess with things like that, you're going to have problems. Equal you know? opposite reaction. Yeah. Now, so let's go to behavior. Remember I said, follow the behavior. That was one of my things. And I said, uh, if they're highly sexual and you want to go to dog parks, maybe you'll take the chance of there being some health concerns. And remember my Bosco story. You, why did he get bone cancer? Could have been that. It could have been anything. He might have gotten kept intact and still got bone cancer. Like you, you're not sure of anything, you know. So follow the behavior. There is a neutering your dog will not make your dog less aggressive, but it could make your dog less dominant. And do you want do you want running? So this is a pro for neutering. Do you want your dog running around acting like he's the biggest baddest dude there is? I don't know. I don't want my kid running around act like these biggest, baddest kid there is, you know, 
Like it's not a great way to live in the world. And dogs are just like, what's up? Some of them. I'm intact. I'm the boss. It's a fine line though, right? Because there's this freedom of living in the world and doing what you want and becoming who you want to be, whether it's a dog or a person or whatever, versus society. Yeah. It's better for society. Yeah. Right? Yes. So it, you could kind of say, well, you can lock your dog up and then you don't need it. Or live on a day. farm. Yeah. Or you li- either way, right? Yeah. You're free. But is there a reason why you would your dog would be out where he would need to be neutered? Dog park? No, but I mean like more working or some like... No. Not really. Not no, today, right? There's this no is... reason. Now, can I say something else gross? That's what this podcast is all about. Saying gross stuff. And I made a neutering video and Eric watched it and he's like, kind of like, dude, you can't. It's gross. But I'm going to say it. Bro, Prince, like... There's he 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 leaks. There's also uh, how gross is that? It's also disgusting. The too. Okay, yeah, and there's because my yeah, I I've never had a my female wife dog. had or you know you know Mia, her dog. Yeah, yeah. she had a whole issue. It was like oh, yeah, wearing I a diaper. Mia. I know. This is years ago. If you can handle it, then don't ever. No, she's do a grandma, it. so it's okay. yeah. Mia Mia is the dog. Yeah, yeah I trained her. You born a trainer too? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, there's female issues. I mean, they're not issues. They're things you have to do. Do you want to deal with that? You, you got to make that call. You got to weigh the pros and the cons. Prince, there is, it's called, there's a word. It's a gross word. It's called schmagma, I think. <laughs> Are you well, serious? It's the real word. I've always heard that word. Heard never That's what it is. The breeder, I called Prince's breeder and I go, is this normal? And she goes, yeah, some dogs just do. It's not constant, but it's like, oh, we see. It's, yeah it's on I, I don't i don't this is a truth telling channel and if you want to uh, deal don't if it just goes into the the pros cons category it is a thing now it, can i deal with that and keeping him intact if he won't get cancer and die absolutely i will obviously but you just have to write down here's the pros here's the cons i want to go to dog parks uh, but I want my dog to be full size, but I, blah, 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 blah. And you just write these things down. It's like any decision in life. You make a pros and cons list and then you make your decision. And these little ones like leakage that comes into, into play a little bit. Yeah. You got to just, you know, there's a, there's a weird thing about animals, like in the hybrid world of adopting hybrids, like savannas and Bengals and things like that. People go, I want this wild animal in my house right i want that i want the first generation but then if you get it you're like oh this is a mistake yeah this is these these cats will climb up your drapes yeah they'll swing around they are territorial yeah they'll attack your kids yeah so you think you want this thing but then you really don't want it yeah like you said every week you think you want it you say you want it right that's like yeah. A couple of videos we've had of that, right? Yeah. So spaying and neutering. Have I gone into it enough? No, you haven't I, said I'm one, not gonna say one way or the one, other. One good con about it. Or one A good pro. pro. Yeah. So to neutering? Pro. Yeah. There's you want to go dog parks? Neuter your dog. Or the pro is not having puppies or oh the pro is not having puppies, but how many I guess there's dogs jumping fences and getting out and coming back pregnant, I guess. It's not that common. That's a more of a spay. Yeah, spay. Pro. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, and then there's. I mean, you have to. Like, look if around. you're the male dog, you don't yeah. have to worry about you know what's what when your you dogs do. I mean, you have to worry about it because your dog's escaping your yard, but y- you don't have the puppies. We have this like female dog, and it's pregnant. And then when yeah, the, the puppies true. come out, you look and you go, "They look like Prince to me." Yeah, looks like a black Doberman. Yeah. Yeah, Prince and was here. I actually during the board and train and during sessions, uh, I have no limit on neutering or spaying. But like, if there's a female, if there's a non neutered male comes out for a session, and then a female who's intact comes out, I have to be careful of the dynamics between Prince and the un neutered male. Like, I have to think about all those dynamics all the time. Females are called intact, also. Um, I would I would call them that. Okay. Not spayed. 
I mean, I just, you got to think about the dynamics if you're running a board and train, doing private sessions. It could be a little. In, but most of them are pretty well behaved, right? Like for the most part. Yeah. And it doesn't matter that much, but it could. And I got to be cognizant of it. I don't want to be surprised. There's a reason, knock on wood, we don't have fights. And it's because I think about all those things. Okay. Females coming out. Okay. Two unneutered males. Okay. She's intact. You got to be careful. Pay attention. Pay attention. Yeah. So there are pros to neutering your dog. Maybe there's a societal pro to it. There's definitely a dog park pro to it. There's a leakage pro to it. The con, there's no medical, there's no consensus medically. Although if you just go back to nature, you would think that an intact dog, male or female, would develop less health problems. Wouldn't you? But that even that UC Davis study was kind of like, well, they found that if you if you neuter it, they had a less chance of of some kind of cancer. Okay, sure. No, I believe it. But like, here's the thing of studies too. Every dog study I read, and I've done a video on this. Every dog study I read, I go, okay, what were the health study? I go, okay, what were the dogs fed? Like there's a control group, but the control group is never that controlled. Yeah. It's random, probably. <laughs> it's like, oh, they got cancer. Well, one was eating, I won't use the, the the worst dog food in history, and one was eating a raw diet. Don't you think that could have been the reason one got cancer and yeah. one didn't? There's a lot. And, and we've looked into the studies. We had a whole video on that, right? There's a also, I, I believe it's called a, is it retrogressive study? Retroactive study, whatever it is, where they look at data from the past. So those are generally generally the least reliable studies where you call people and say, hey, have you had a dog? Was it neutered? What happened? Oh, it died of bone cancer? Okay, great. Thank you. And write that down. Versus like a double blind study where they're- Which training, doesn't exist in dog training would dog be my training. guess. Yeah. Or doesn't very, exist. Or if they do, they probably don't have the numbers of dogs to actually make it. So, yeah. uh, what is it? Statistically significant, I would think. Oh my God. Bro, don't get me started on- behavioral dog studies. It's the biggest joke I've ever seen. Do we seen go in down this life. road? It's the craziest thing. Go read a behavioral dog study and you'll get to the end of it and it'll be like, or at the beginning, right? It'll say like, and we called a hundred dog owners. Yeah. You did what? That's what your study's based off of? I remember that. How about here's your study? Dog aggression. You take me, and my methods and you take another dog and their methods and we but the dogs are similar and we see who gets them less aggressive then you call those people a year later and 10 years later and you see if their dog is less aggressive after a year and 10 years with me or a year in a trainer with a force free with a force free trainer there's your study done dog daddy said let's do this or something like this and of course, he wasn't taken up on it because you lose that, and you win when you when you win when you say follow the science or, or or read the studies. And the consensus in the medical community, in the behavioral dog training community, is this: it's the most nonsense consensus in the history of the world. So there's a guy, uh, Zach George, YouTuber. And we had made a video and he had asked other dog trainers what they thought about, um, what was the topic oh, over, what it was over? Bamf, it's like the veterinary oh, veterinarians. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we had put the video out to respond. Yeah. And what we did was went in and got all the studies, printed them out oh, yeah, and, and reviewed them, them in the trash. Well, we reviewed them before we threw them in the trash. Oh yeah. Yeah. But, um, uh, and there was a response to Zach George cause he was asking opinions, gave him the opinion. And, but we looked at it and we couldn't believe how bad the studies were. They were all from vets, but it was like the most it's ridiculous so thing you've ever seen. It said, we called 50 people, asked them these questions and there you go. Yeah. Problem solved. And here's the thing too. Yes. No, you're absolutely right. Here's the thing too. Here's the thing too. There's this word salad punishment. This is punishing. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to punish Eric right now. Okay. Technically, operantly, this is punishment. 
Looking at Eric in a disappointed way is punishment. I feel violated. Also, taking a bat and hitting him on the side of the head is also punishment. There's a spectrum, okay? And it goes forever. And then there's neutral. Okay, I'm going to explain this to you guys, okay? There is neutral. There is punishment going this way forever. And there's reinforcement going this way forever. Right here is looking at Eric. Right here is hitting him in the head with a bat. But I can technically use it however I want to use it in a study and say punishment caused this problem. But the bat example is actually the punishment that caused problem. When you get closer to neutral, punishing a bad behavior right near neutral and just slowly taking away that bad behavior causes zero problems. But they'll go punishment, but they're talking about, they won't say why, they'll just say punishment. Getting into horrible, harsh punishment can cause these side effects, which I've talked about with e-callers. But then this tiny little thing of trying to reduce a behavior by little incremental saying they can't do that, these tiny incremental punishments is actually the greatest thing ever you use with your employees and your children and your husband and wife, where you say, "Hey, this is disappointing to me," or uh, you know, whatever, can actually is actually the way of the world. No, that's a that's punishment. That's punishment, right? Absolutely. And some people are actually against that. Yeah, crazy people. People, but crazy. Some of people. them probably drive legitimately like this, right? Crazy people Don't you who think? haven't lived life. What? Some of these people drive studies like this and fund. Things like this. Yeah, because they have an agenda. And the agenda. Okay, vets. Oh my God. You want to go, vets? Can we just can we just do the always apologize? Um, hey, you guys can harp on dog trainers using punishment, right? Remember my continuum. When you stop, when you increase your staff and you stop holding dogs down and to give them vaccinations and you stop pulling dogs into your back room and you never use punishment. Vets are out there talking about dog trainers, but yet they're doing all the stuff. Yeah, but we're they're, vets. They're applying force. We're vets. We can do that. Oh, you can do that? Why? To neuter a dog? To, to take dog's testicles off? When it's convenient for them? Yeah. Okay. Vets can, vets, I will literally listen to them when they stop, when they practice what they preach. Stop pulling a dog into the back room. Stop holding a dog down for neutering or giving vaccinations. Surgery is one thing. Dog is about to die is one thing. But that's not, and increase your staff. Oh, you can't increase your staff because you want to make money? Yeah, I get it. I get it, vets. But quit coming out with position statements. So about, you're being, you're jo you're kind I'm, of joking, but you're saying don't be a hypocrite, basically, right? Am I joking? I don't know. I'm not joking. <laughs> I have a real, real problem with it, a giant problem with it, with with hypocrites. A real problem, dude. That affects a lot of things. <laughs> I wonder if eventually this podcast will turn to like. Alex Jones level where like you'll tell people how you really feel because I feel it's a little polished oh, bro um so you think that's in the neutering we're gonna get does some... this does this make sense to you Eric what it I'm makes, saying everything you're saying makes sense to me as the layman yeah that's the viewers. dog person that I well, try to represent um, yeah see your viewers are smarter than the normal lay person so I just represent the that's person nice. who's not into yeah. dog training so to speak I've learned a lot Listen, just from you if I'm off on this vet thing tell me I want it I honestly want to know if I'm if I'm off and I know I'm being hyperbolic if that's yeah. the word I know I'm being like listen when they when the when the vet behaviors come out with his position statement about about positive you force free is the only way to go and they're pulling dogs in the bathroom back room not being force free do yeah. you see the problem in that this is yeah. a position statement by a powerful organization mm -hmm. am yeah. i am i missing something what you're saying too what, i would I like to know i don't know if people know they give these pamphlets out that are pdf and printable that they give that is 
trying to send an agenda as far as what they think is acceptable to do. And that's what we were reading. And we're like, wow, this is pretty bro, political. And it's not even political in a certain way. It's very, very sneaky. And yeah, I could see how it r- would run. What's you the, the rules? Way. Um, not for me, but for thee, whatever, not the rule, the, the saying do as I say, not as I do. No, but yeah, like it's something like, um, like, like, like it's the, the that rule is not for me. Yeah. Everyone else has to abide by the rules I'm saying, but I don't abide it's by like that. That's what they're doing. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. No? Yeah, we're 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 touching on all the sayings that are not <laughs> that are the not one that. I'm looking for. Um, Something for me, rules for me, but not for the kind of. So the vets, but I would say, bro, to save the day here, is that there are 100 uh, percent some solid vets out there. Absolutely, that care about their. Patients, many, they're many, dog patients. Many. We love you guys. Just like the Europeans. Just, we love the Europeans. We love the Europeans. We're generalizing the continent of Europe as whatever. We're joking. The doggy right. daycares. And we're generalizing. I think this is a podcast, right? We so. can we can get into <laughs> feels like it. <laughs> we can we can I people people pick up what I'm putting down here. Yeah. I, right. Going. I'm not saying all vets are bad. I'm not saying all countries in Europe are bad. I'm not saying all force fear trainers are bad. We're we're talking in generalities because yeah. it's a boring podcast. If, if you we don't. just go, well, let's make sure we give the percentage of great vets compared to bad vets and great dog trainers compared to dog uh, whatever. You that know was what I'm saying? negative reinforcement you just gave me right there. I don't know if you used that term correctly. Negative reinforcement, positive punishment, negative punishment, positive reinforcement, negative reinforcement are the four legs of operant conditioning. And they are more complex than you think and more complex than 99% of dog trainers know. I'd say 95% of dog trainers, man, 90% don't even understand the the fundamentals of them, let alone the complete new, the real nuances with them. So you punished me there. Where? A form of punishment. Oh, when I threw looked little, at you? A little shade. No, you threw a little shade. At you? Um, yeah. Hey, real quick. I don't think I did. Before we get off the topic of vets. Do you have anything else to say? Because I want to bring up something different. I would like to get off the topic of vets. Okay. And we're done with neutering. We're done. We're done. Right? We, we finished that one pretty yeah. good. Okay. Yeah. Let's be so, done. Okay. So ready? I have a oh. gift for you, my friend. Oh, and somebody. Know I know what it is now that I see but it. Oh, and it. just so you know, somebody in the comments from, I think the last podcast said, Joel, we want it unfiltered. Yeah. You see that We've one? We've heard that a bunch of times. They said, we want we want it they just want it give unleashed. it to us dude unleashed. it's unleashed bro i they don't know what to unleashed. tell you there okay was i'm a, ready there was a comment that said they they wanted it instead of weekly they wanted it twice a week and they wanted it to cover even more crazy stuff so i was thinking like backman unleashed unleashed or something two podcasts a week yeah that's i don't be think that's going to happen this is my gift. oh so i bought this look at that oh that's I bought this. I it that. has been washed. I don't have one. You don't have one. And I felt guilty, even though I was proactive and went and bought one. Yeah. With not that good. We have to buy them, which seems odd, but. And I, now I that you're it. buff. Oh, should I just. You don't have to put on now, but <laughs> but maybe next I podcast never... you could rock it. I will. But Beckman, Beckman all day. All day. Bro, we'll do this all day. We'll do this all day. We'll do this all day. Yeah, that's for you. That's not Thank just you. podcast thing. That's for you. So I'm. Look. Thinking about this really this cool nice. one it that I want to make nice. at the end of the month when we drop our new merch. That doesn't look good, right? Like and that. so, yeah, you'd probably have to wear it. Um, but it is tight. It's a good brand. The yeah. brand, sorry, they're going to go crazy about this. This brand here, uh, next level. Whenever I have a shirt like that, I always buy them. I love them because oh. it has a tight neck and they're like slimmer. Cool. So, but anyways, that's called the ring spun one. But that's nice. the one I bought. So, anyways, there's that. If you want the discount, they're here till the end of the month like unleashed that. all capitals right unleashed is the promo code for 10 percent off for just podcast people just for podcasts we're not dropping it on the videos but we'll have some yeah. you I'll probably come special. up with some new merch uh or we'll we'll work on some stuff yeah for next month maybe and yeah. uh mix it up so anyways so that was that so you're welcome uh Thank which you. is not just a good song by Dwayne johnson so want to get into a couple other things Yes. So do you mind if I tell you a story? No, go for so, it. So 
I go hike. You know, I hike multiple times a week. Yep. Okay. And when I go hiking down or up, uh, I see these green bags. Oh, poop. And they've got poop in them. And somebody took the effort of taking their dog out, goes to the bathroom, they scoop it, put it in the plastic, you know, tie it up or whatever. And then they just leave it right in the middle of the trail. Really? And if it was once, I would say, ah, they must have gotten in a hurry and ran. Yeah. People just set them wherever they want. And this is in a wild, somewhat wild area. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this is infuriating. <laughs> is, it at not... least, is it better that they at least picked it up? No. No. It's Is it worse? I mean, because the coyotes poop out there. So like that kind of just degrades the flies, get it, etc. Now Versus, someone's got to pick it up. But now someone has to pick it up. I'm going, well, you were what? You thought it was a good I'm idea to bag it. I'm not picking it up. I've actually picked stuff up on the trail. I shouldn't say I'm not picking it up, but like you get poop on your hands. You're on a walk. It sounds horrible. Well, you wouldn't pick up after Prince if you were. No, no. Hiking? You picking up someone else's poop bag or me like, oh, like random poop nails. bag. I'm going to pick it up. I guess we should pick up other people's poop bags that leave it there. I don't even know a dog right now. I know. Yeah, I'm a lot. No, but someone else's poop, like another human, like. They put the poop in a bag. A human poop? <laughs> I'm definitely not. Doing Your that. problem is they they picked up their dog's poop and they left the bag sitting there. It's like 90 percent of the way. Right? Yeah, it's weird. I, I went don't to get school, it. but I didn't go in the classroom. You know, it's like yeah. If you're gonna start something, finish it. And also, I get it. I, I don't get it. I don't get why they would do that. But they do it, and then, um, but so yeah, the pet waste thing is a little. Yeah. Um, there's actually, it's actually not an accident why why this front yard has a white picket fence. People think mm. I want to live in a nice community with white picket fences. It's to keep the dogs off the yeah, grass. That's a big problem. That crap on the grass. Yeah. So do you always pick up after Prince? Yes, Prince. Uh, literally a month ago, pooped like <laughs> somewhere else for the first time. What do you mean? We were cruising in our neighborhood and he's on a leash and like he just starts to poop where he never poops out. Yeah, he waits. He waits and he goes poops twice a day and it's in the morning. We have a somewhat schedule, poops on the property, poops at the house, not in the house. And I was like, oh my God, like I don't have a poop bag. So I had to run home and get a poop bag. Did you clean it up? Of course. That's impressive. You went all the way back, got a poop bag. Yes. Rather you, than Prince's big old poop in someone's lawn, you know, infuriating that do is. Do you know what people do though? Plus Prince, like, it's not like they're not going to know where, like people have ring cameras all over now. Yeah. Like they'll, then they'll be like, oh, a freaking black Doberman. Like there's not that many of them. That's that Joel guy. <laughs> With 415,000 Yeah. And then they subs. post it on, and then it becomes viral. And like. He doesn't clean up after his dog. Joel Beckman doesn't clean up after his dog. That would be bad. So is there a name for this move when you're walking your dog, when you walk the dog and then you think it might go to the bathroom and then you just go, yes. you just look around, like you just pretend like you're looking at something else and then you give it about a minute and then you just walk off. Have you ever seen this move? Oh yes. <laughs> oh yes. I'll be, I'll admit to you. Oh, you've done it. <laughs> I've done this move, but I go back to get a bag. I didn't do this. I've done this with board trains. I'll do the move that kind of buys me some time and then I'll go get the bag. Oh, Does that make man. sense? You return to because the scene of the crime. You have to leave. If you Or here's the here's the, the other crime, thing okay. I do. Here's the other thing I do. I go I mouth to the air. I'll be back. <laughs> so if anybody's watching, they know I'll be back. But I'll you go, are back. I'll go, I'll go. Oh, and then I'll go. I go, I do this thing and I kind of go like, oh yeah. And then I run home. Like I'll be like, I'll be, it's like so you I'm, do return. Yes. But I someone's watching. If someone's mouth, watching, I don't want them to just be like, the dude just left. You mouth to the the ring camera. No, to the world. Like, like I kind of go like, oh, I'll be back. And then I and then I run home like a higher power or something. This is the weirdest thing. I can't believe we're even talking about it. Like I've never really thought about the weirdness that I do, but I do this process. Oh, that, that was the, cause I, yeah, the violence and the, um, punishment that you did was about, you were, you were teasing me, right. About what was it about percentages or whatever? 
just a minute ago. Yeah. So I was wondering oh. what percentage of time do you return to the scene of the crime? Me personally? Yeah. When your dog, when you do the look away, when you do the no look pass, how often do you actually come back and clean up the poop? 99. That's pretty good. Yeah. So when I'm never like on a hike, like I used to hike with Bosco a lot, but like, I'm never too far away. Okay. You're like in your neighbors. Yeah. Like I, yeah. More reason. What if yeah. you were further away? Would you, your chances go down? Yes. They go down a little. Well, let's see. We can't do a segment on like being a responsible pet owner. And well, no, like there's a Joel Beckman doesn't pick up. No, no. But I don't, I, I, I have, I left a poop. I may have, I don't, remember leaving I mean, a poop. I, like, okay, I guess not Simpson impossible like it's not impossible the does not fit okay night uh, if you're legit i don't i literally don't remember leaving a a bosco or prince poop somewhere what do you mean uh, what about other board and trains or a board and train poop somewhere but That's i can't good. say it's i don't know my hat's off to you for 99 percent. okay the reason you. Because before I sing your praises, I saw a comment that I thought was so powerful that I had to share it. Oh. And so I don't, I don't want to be singing your praises too much if I find out that 36% of the time you leave a crap <laughs> in someone's yard. So yeah, I wouldn't. So, so because Let's you passed the test, praises. we'll give you a little bit of luck. Okay. 99%. So this is from viewer, right? Said this in the comments said, my favorite dog trainers are or and coaches are in this order. Liz and Joel Beckman, Caesar Milan, Will Atherton. Atherton is really, really good for beginners and first time puppy owners. He's a sweetheart and his methods are clutch. Many people won't have too many issues raising new puppies from scratch with him, but Beckman is the first line of defense against all issues, period. No nonsense. He's gonna teach you what you need to do to get the job done. But at the same time, the love and care this guy has for individuals, their dogs, the community at large, and especially his family is really impactful and infectious. I've already learned a lot about just being a strong yet loving member and leader of a family and community just from soaking in his videos. Yeah. Dude. Good. I've seen that. I that's saw that. a really good comment. I, I, I think it's sort of obvious. Like he's the first line of defense for like, getting rid of behaviors you know like like that seems to be the thing out there is like joel can deal with like a prom behavior and like you know and like all prom behaviors it's the second part that i like 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 my pinned on my last video my pin tweet saying don't shame these clients it will not be tolerated mm -hmm. that's kind of the second part of that one which is like being kind of a leader in community in the community and like being an example be, yeah yeah, I, li I like that. That's very high praise. I I have a little bit of a voice that I never knew I'd have or even wanted to have, but I do. And so if I can try to, if I can try to hold, say something about vets that is heard that I believe and, and, and helps, if I can try to talk about picking up your poop, if I can talk about, about, um, anything family wise or dog wise to make people better and happier and less ashamed or something, then that's what I'm going to do. And that doesn't involve dog training. It doesn't involve getting rid of jumping. It's like being bigger. A human. It's bigger. Being a human. Yeah. That's yeah. It's kind of heavy, but you are example. You do have a, a following, so to speak. And yeah. people want to hear what you have to say about this stuff. Yeah. That's why partly why we're doing this podcast and partly why the last one had a lot of views is people seem to like it. So yeah. I'll keep saying it. Yeah, that's pretty. My truth. Man. <laughs> My truth. So one thing. So if you look at the last comments in, what is that? Podcast number five, which was the last about Bosco. Podcast. Yeah. I think it, it's close to like 20,000 views. views, which is is a lot for a podcast. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, that is not the idea. We were hoping we'd get like maybe 2,000 people tons of people and it's, it's the more comments, but there was so many stories shared about their own dogs and dogs that people have lost. Super sad. Yeah. And so there's no way we could go cover all of those comments, but we read them and, um, 
it was hard to read. And then I mentioned the thing about the bone cancer that other people had mentioned. Yeah. But there was a one about a military guy who was saying he, you know, it's difficult to walk through, right? And, and we're referring to when you took Bosco to the vet. Yeah. And he just brought that up. So I didn't want people to think that we weren't reading your comments. We read them. They were powerful, but it's last week's podcast on Bosco is pretty heavy. And I don't know if we can follow that up with more heaviness. No. It, and also their personal stories. Yeah. You know, um, but they are quite touching. Yeah. Losing a dog, you know, is a heavy thing. The good news is um, somebody commented and said another trainer. I didn't know this other trainer was like not she didn't just say this like willy nilly, but it was like, get another dog. Like there is a cure in a way that I kind of agree. If you're, if you, if you want another dog, if you're like, that's, that's the good news. And it seems pretty obvious. How long should you wait? Yeah. Well, uh, however long you want to wait. I know, but how long that, that travel? trainer that this person commented about is like, get it pretty quick. I think it's, it's an interesting and true thing. Like it's different. I don't want to get into heavy stuff, but like with family, it's different with fam You can't get another one. Yeah. You do. Does that make sense? You literally, if someone dies, there's no replacement and, and in a dog, there's no replacement either, but it, now, now you have a puppy. Your, your mm -hmm. grief is going to be helped because there's a new life to be taken care of. Yeah, there's a not to get into heavy stuff. There's a also, I think there's a not to get too deep on this, but you know, humans, I think the average male's life's around 74 in the US, 79 yeah. for females. So I think how how old what do does a typical dog live? 10 years? Giant dogs, uh nine or ten, then you get into different sizes. Smaller is like closer to 16 or something like that. Sixteen is pretty old, but like but 14, yeah. Yeah. So, so it is natural, obviously we talk about natural a lot in this, but like it is natural to have several dogs over the course of your life because oh, of course. they just, yeah, they don't live as long. So that's oh, yeah. the dog years, seven year thing. Yeah. Is that real? Seven year dog thing? It is. It is in Pretty many legit. respects, but it's not as far as like, like a dog at a year, a year and a half is kind of like kind of an adult, Yeah, but a seven year old or a 12 year old is not in it. So adult. it's in middle or advanced age that it makes more sense. Yeah. It's, it's actually like death at this point is when that makes sense. It does not, it is not the same for like behavioral changes and becoming who you are. So as a person who is completely unqualified to talk about this, I just want to say with the dog dying and then adopting a new dog, and this is just like yeah. experience and having dealt with some different death stuff is I think you have to carve out some time to grieve. Yes. And that might be, point. it might be luring to go shopping for a sweet looking puppy right away. But that sadness that's coming over you is for a reason. And it doesn't mean you need to bask in it for two years or whatever, but there should be a, an acknowledgement of the separation and then soak. I'm all about soaking in. You are. I'm about like, you're in pain, just sit there with it, not for a year, but for a week and just be sad. Like why? Because you, it's like a, it's like a, a it, growing experience. Yeah. You're just accepting what yeah. happened in life yeah. and that in your, you're, you're reflecting on yeah. that. And then that gap creates more love. I think so. I, and also I, I think you're repressing, your I think you're repressing it when you just I think you're Go right. Go to the next thing. I think that's a good point. I don't think you should repress. I think just the same way you don't want to use alcohol after someone's death to yeah. feel better. Sure, you feel better, but it's going to, oh, things I think are going to come right. home to roost. I think you're right. And so I think we made, we waited a year before getting a dog. And you're a dog trainer. And I'm a dog trainer. So, yeah, I mean. You're a dog trainer who trains dogs to train yeah, other dogs. Three days seems um, <laughs> not healthy. <laughs> it's a little rush. Your dog dies. You're like, 
three days later, you got a puppy like, oh, I don't even remember the last dog. Yeah, that seems not right. Yeah. But a week actually seems pretty quick too, but like it's a month. I guess, you know what I think matters more is, is how, is how much you face what happened and just not stew on it, but just accept it and really like reflect on the dog and the dog's life and then move to the next one versus shutting it out and yeah. then moving to the next one. I think you're right. You know, I think that's, um, so did you that's cover all of your apologies for today? Should I apologize already for what we said today? No, no, you don't want this to. is a joke segment, by the way, the apology segment like is a joke segment. There will be there. Will, we'll apologize. We'll apologize for real. If we say something wrong, we haven't yet said anything wrong. Nothing that you don't feel. Nothing that I don't feel strongly about. And by the way, all this stuff's, if you've trained 10,000 dogs, like you're going to have knowledge of weird things that is just like, like you don't have strong opinions on things like me. So apologies. No, I mean, we know. Can I get crack a couple of comments? Yeah. We had a lot. We like comments on the podcast. We're going to read the comments from the last podcast because we want to engage with the podcast audience mm. more than maybe a regular video. That's a that's a real important point. So every single episode, we have prompted people to leave comments. So yeah. leave comments in this video if you're interested in them to be read for the next week. Now, a couple pieces. We had a lot of comments about adding this to podcast apps. Oh, yeah. And so we now are distributed on YouTube Music, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, big deal. Spotify, iHeartRadio, and probably basically every a bunch of them. Podcast place on earth, it sounds yeah, like. Yeah, there's a lot. I think there's like Google might take a little bit longer. I don't even know who listens to Google Podcasts. Never even heard of it. Didn't know about it either. But wait, don't say that. This yeah, but YouTube's Google owned is, by Google. Yeah. Uh, so I think they archive and they do some stuff. But either way. Uh, that work has been done. So all the people that said, I can't go to the gym and listen to this podcast. Bro, well, by the way, you're you like making fun of those people. Yes. I am those people. Yes. I'm like watching YouTube and then I, I'm like, I want to listen. Then I kick and it goes away. I'm all annoyed. You know why? You know, it's so funny that you bring so you're that like up. making fun of them, but they're, you know why I don't, I don't have that experience No, is because I have YouTube premium and I've had it for like five years. So if I just hit click, it still plays it. What? Yes, YouTube Premium will not give you commercials and we're not giving oh. a YouTube Premium sales pitch, but I think it's 14 bucks a month and you I get- I didn't know that. Yeah, you get no oh commercials. So I knew when that. I, I see people that have commercials and I'm like, you get commercials on YouTube? And they're like, yeah, I didn't know this, but, I, but I've been paying for it so long. You can oh. download videos when you're in an airplane, you can download the videos. And then when you turn it off, it just keeps playing. The turn off feature is interesting. Yeah. So I didn't understand. And then my wife told me, she's like, you don't want to listen on YouTube. It turns it off. And then I yeah. said, you should get YouTube music. And she's like, I'm not good. I want to listen to it on Apple music. That's my pod chaser. So Megan, we got Apple music. We got you on for, in. for her. She has a podcast. It's called tooth and claw. And it's supposed to be really popular. And she loves it why are we promoting tooth and claw I don't your know. wife's favorite podcast i want to get here. you on there what is it it's like a wild animal thing they want to yeah. go head to head with us and and megan listens to it she loves it why is megan listening to wild animal podcast? she thinks it's so interesting i oh, don't understand why that doesn't seem like a megan thing to do no but people have it's weird interests on podcasts yeah oh there was a podcast called 99 invisible it's mm. still out there and it was this weird, like architectural thing. And Megan's listening. To no, it. and I got into it oh. and I was like, why am I listening to it? But it was so fun. Maybe we'll have some people that don't even have a dog that are just listening to this right now. Oh, bro. People are always like, I don't know why I'm watching these. I've watched five <laughs> of his videos. They comment and they're like, I don't even own a dog all the time. That's crazy. I think that's common. I think my mother-in-law was she watching you before she had a dog. Oh yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Definitely. So. We're now on every, you can listen to us everywhere is the point, I think. And that's why we have to make sure we are doing the audio side of it too. Because some people won't be able to right. see, they won't be able to see your, right. like right now when you're joking. There's too many pauses as we talk mm -hmm. and the audio people are like, 
come on guys yeah or am i wrong um that's what we're doing it's i think people do you have to talk like quicker in an audio podcast and just like do 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 i think people have a mainly lot for to YouTube, say so i think people have a lot to say there's no shortage of comments and if you you i think you should read what they say and take it to heart and if there's any positive um what, what would you call that Crit constructive criticism on us yeah or on the way the podcast could be better you listen to it and you you take it yeah. to the you know you don't take it to the bank but you, yeah. you take it into consider you, but... consideration well everyone has a different opinion some people want it longer some people want it shorter everyone oh, has yeah. their own opinion about this yeah. so if we see 10 comments about something it's legit mm -hmm. you know yeah or five 50 or 50 it's super legit yeah. like yeah if we see 50 people saying 10 people saying we want it longer we should make it longer these 10 people saying we should make it shorter we should make it shorter but we can't make it longer why it's long <laughs> oh just because it's already long but yeah we're at hour and 18 minutes all right let's get into it so what else, what else? jordan hey a more comments. hey joel and eric love the podcast and the content on this channel i have recommended so many people to your youtube channel for training anything and everything. I do many training sessions. We have, I think, a dog trainer. And before I found your YouTube channel about a year ago, I didn't think there was anyone else that had the same attitude toward dog training like myself. Joel and I, I may not this. have met each other, but I feel I have found my twin hundreds of miles away. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that one. That's. I think one that's twin. awesome. There was one comment a while ago, I think I talked about somewhere, and it said, everyone in our village listens to your, watches your YouTube channel. <laughs> Go village? I'm like the whole village? One TV that you share? No, I don't think it was like that. But I'm like, where's this village? That's should, what I want to know. Should have asked them. So cat I know I should have. Cat Calico says made the made the mistake of watching this, and she's referring to the Bosco um, uh, podcast of last week while getting ready for work. I am now late because I started crying during the Bosco session and oh had gosh. to redo my eye makeup. I have had the Is that same a true story with my cat. And I've decided to do a little late or decided to be a little bit of late to work so I could cuddle with my dog. Is that a true, a true story? story? Yeah. You think people didn't cry from that? There was a guy, the military guy I told you about who it sounded, he didn't say he was crying, but it sounded like he was affected by your story. Like it or not, eliciting an emotional reaction like that is a, is a good thing. Do you know what I'm saying? For you or the people listening? <laughs> I don't, I guess for me. <laughs> Why is it a good thing? People, I just heard a podcast. I've heard podcasts and someone goes, Oh, I heard a podcast with the Smashing Pumpkins singer. And someone guy? said, Your music makes me sad. And the Smashing Pumpkins singer, the bald guy, goes, Good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, there's emotion like people need Grief. that or need feel maybe pain. he was just saying good for me because you'll buy more because when emotion is elicited people are drawn to it i, I don't know do you, I'm, I'm no have you ever like, cried it's, listening to music no i cry at sports like anything really? like not yeah like not anything sports but emotional sports i cried at that, at that <laughs> bro <laughs> Okay, this is the stupidest thing in the world. The new Michael Jordan Nike movie. I haven't seen it. It's on Amazon for free. It was like just in the theaters. Then all of a sudden I was like, oh, it's just here on Amazon. Watch it with my family. My my kids saw me cry when Kobe Bryant died. Okay. Then I'm watching Michael Jordan, the montage of of him and his, his defeats, right? His mm -hmm. moments of just like, English. It gives me chills, bro. Look at this. Can you guys yeah, see this? I see that. Oh wow. my God. This is so embarrassing. And like, I didn't cry, cry, but my eyes got watery. My kids are looking at me like, oh my God, dad's crying at this, this one montage moment where they're presenting Michael Jordan in this movie with, with some video presentation. And I love Michael Jordan so much that like, that it just, it made me emotional. It's sports stuff that makes me cry or as I told last week in the podcast, picking up my dog who's yeah. lifeless, but it's mainly sports. Yeah, sports are. So I have the same issue. I don't know if it's an issue, but with triumph. So when I see sports where it's like some unbelievable feat, like somebody becomes a champion 
right? Especially oh. when I'm big into UFC. So when I see I someone I've followed for years so and when like Brandon Moreno, who I think became the 125 pound champion, he, he was so happy huh. that it was like a moment in history, but you could feel his emotion and then they cry. But it's, it's to me, there's something more like that makes me emotional about when somebody triumphs something that's yeah. like impossible. No, I get it. Versus just, this is sad, but yeah. music does that to music me. Music is very emotional. Like music is very reminiscent. So like, if you I like it for me to relax, I can't listen to music. Cause I go, Oh yeah, that song came out in 1996. I lived in this place and like, Oh, I was, I, I, I was happy or I wasn't happy or whatever it is. Smells. That's why it would be a bit dog training, like smelling something. Well, br takes just you bring you right back to wherever smell an old cologne or an old perfume. You're, you're emotional. That's what I, I talk about with people all the time. Like, um, dogs, this is an interesting to bring it back to dogs, dogs that live at the beach will regress from a board and train quicker than dogs that live within 20 miles of my facility. Cause it's a different stimulus. They get home to the beach. They go, they smell oh. the air and they, a flood of old behaviors come back. Mm -hmm. Dogs that live downtown San Diego to a degree, because the visual stimuli of, of the buildings is yeah. very different from where I live, but mainly the smell thing. Isn't that interesting? And I sit there across from somebody and my, and they go, Hey, you know, you live right by the beach. I go, you're, there's a chance your dog will regress more than a dog that lives 10 miles from here. And they look at me like you're crazy. I'm crazy. And I go, listen, it's a, it's a Pavlovian thing. There's this stimulus that goes back in and then old behaviors are brought back. So they go back to old behaviors. So you said Pavlovian, which That's is what I said. Pavlov's dog, right? That's Can you explain to the oh. uninitiated about Pavlov? Ivan Pavlov does not Ivan. seem like a very nice guy. If you Google a picture of his dog set up to all these horrible things with measuring of saliva. Basically, it's automatic responses as opposed to so classical conditioning or Pavlovian conditioning was this Russian guy, Pavlov, who did all these studies on automatic responses. OK, as opposed to B.F. Skinner, who did all these studies on operant conditioning, which we've talked about today, which is which is based on punishment will reduce behavior, reinforcement will increase behavior. And these are non-automatic -autom responses. These are operant responses. Mm -hmm. So, but Pavlov did way more for the world than B.F. Skinner ever will. Ever. I've he was never, a, sorry, God. That's all. I've never heard anyone say Ivan Pavlov in my life. Yeah. Well, you just heard it. It's his name. I'm impressed that you knew his name was Ivan. You shouldn't, bro. I sat in school for years and learned this stuff. Classrooms. Just. Just freaking. And like loved it. Like I went to school for animal training and I find, I found my home. Like animals, I just was like, I love, I did great in school when I just didn't really care about school before that. And I just absorbed everything animal training. You found I something loved you it. Loved. And I was like, this is the greatest thing ever. And it, it went in my brain and it stayed in my brain. That's the difference. Because I, I knew it was important for, to me. Whereas well, you're in school, like yeah. kids out there, you should think it's all important. So it stays in your brain. Yeah, it's the passion. And that's, that's why when you talk often about me calling you when you're at the beach, and you were doing the doorway method and i said you need to start the youtube thing oh how we started youtube yeah yeah you i think what it is is there's this it's not no nonsense but it's this belief that you know yeah i know how to fix these dogs like i'm yeah. convinced when i watch you that you believe what you're saying yeah i do because you do yeah which makes it easier but you're also because you're passionate and then what's coming out is the bf skinner right and this yeah. Pav, Ivan Pavlov, as I call him, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, that's, that. <laughs> I like that you call him that. I'm sure, like two seconds. Oh, does this person have a second comment? I, oh, no. Maybe they're just calling him viewer because it doesn't have a More name. More comments. Maybe, yeah. Okay. It doesn't have a name. That's weird. I think it must be labeling them viewer. 
No. It says viewer 9058. The other one it's was his viewer. name. There's a different one, I oh, think. Oh, that's new. We should find to out. YouTube. It doesn't matter. But it says, well, that's, what, yeah, go ahead. It says, I'm honestly dying for another. Oh, this is the one. Uh, dying for another podcast episode already. We need a live oh, in the middle of the week to hold us over, laugh out loud. Maybe another podcast on the same channel to talk about life and family or wildlife oh. stuff, double smiley face. Really love videos and with actual dog training, obviously, but also nice to just listen to long form discussion without barking. Ha ha. Love you guys. Thanks for everything you do. That's pretty cool, right? Yeah. Want more podcast. It's awesome. Peter awesome. says in the aviation industry, we have a saying trust, but verify applies to everything you said about vets, doctors, etc. cetera. Yes. Um, and he makes true. a comment about, trust, but verify. about going to Australia and that I already have the a lot of Australians. Was yeah. that from last week or two weeks ago? We talked about no, like Australians were last week hard in the comments. Cause we talked about Australia. Time. Yeah, that's true. A bunch. Uh, I should, we should go. Yeah, we should. I've said at every podcast how much my wife loved going to Australia. And she wants to go back. Yeah, I I feel that we're being called there. But I think th th you've mentioned about doing a tour at one point and going places. And, you know, we are as busy as anyone. Anyone? I don't want to say we're the most busy, but we are. As of dog trainers? Or people in the people. world like oh, not wow. elon musk level but yeah we're not there it's crazy we have three children yes each three kids that's crazy dude. wives that's crazy normal jobs plus all the other stuff we do yeah it's a lot but yeah. i still feel like your passionate thing and one thing about this with you you being so passionate about dog training i'm passionate about youtube yeah obsessed probably Right. But I feel like yeah. doing something like going to Oregon, Australia, wherever, Canada, wherever you go. I'm from Oregon. It doesn't feel like it, it's work. You know, it feels like it would be tough, but it, it the planning feel. would be tough. OK, where are we going to talk? What are we going to do? Like, like the planning would be because it would need to be worth it. Like. What do we get? We're, we're going to go Australia and do what? If you build it, they will come. That's a good point, actually. Don't you think? Yeah. I hope they come. I, I, I was thinking about this, even with the podcast stuff. I was like, I don't care if 10 people listen to it. It doesn't matter. Like That's not a flight to Australia, though. True. But at the same time, when That's you true. do things You're that right. you love, then... You're right, actually. That's a, way, a good way to look at it, bro. You we're just, gonna plan it the best of it. We're gonna show up in Australia, and then they're gonna come or they're not gonna come, and it's not our problem. Yeah, right. That's what you've you're got saying? a message. Well, you talked about it a little bit, like your legacy. You were talking a bit about more than dog training, about who you who you are, what you stand for. Mm -hmm. So, if you're bringing this message, and I think you have, you know, visions of your legacy. Yes. Right? Yes. So you going to Texas and saying I'm gonna hit up dallas and austin and wherever else yeah and you're gonna talk to those people shake hands share your methods and things it's true you can't really go wrong we need to call dog daddy dog daddy that's what he, he like cruises all over the place i know you be like bro what podcast. do you do I, yeah I think that guy's awesome i want to know where that guy's from i think he's from like belgium or like austria or something that's what i think i don't know hey what's that beep Oh, it's over. It's like four or something or five. It does it every uh, every day. It's a stopwatch. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, we could have him on. But I think he's, I don't know. Like I, I watch a lot of dog content. So the, the issue is I was, all the work we do with the uh, Beckman dog training, YouTube goes, oh, this guy loves dogs, loves dog training. So then they start showing up in the oh, feed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I saw him with some dogs. I go, this kid's wild. But I think he's another one like you where he's actually just passionate about what he does. Yeah, I agree. You know, that's why I think of all the different people I think would be funny to have on the podcast, I think Dog Daddy would be the funniest. Not funny. he's funny? He's just more open. I think he's interesting. He just doesn't give up. You know what? He doesn't yeah. seem to. Yeah, I agree. 
but I do feel like he actually wants to help the people that he's working with. Right. Like it's Which not you a don't business. get that impression from everybody, right? Definitely not. Yeah. But there's some good ones. There's good ones. So some of the people you've referred me to, which we won't say who they are that you just have seen over the years. They're pretty solid. There's some good people in the, I'd say more in the, what do you call it? Balanced camp. Uh, yeah. That seem pretty grounded. Yeah. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Yeah. Have dog daddy on. <laughs> Caesar Milan. Would you do it? One with Caesar? <laughs> of course. Caesar's a stud, huh? Bro, he's been through it. He's been through yeah. the grinder. Yeah. He's been he... through it. Yeah. So they if come out, he... they come at you, dude. You, you, no, nobody, the people going at him over the years, dude, they've never been through anything. If they'd been through anything in life, they wouldn't be doing what they're doing. They're soft humans that tried to destroy that guy and he came through it. They, yeah, they, they're soft. They kick people. him People, they just try to kick him and he's just, he, you know, got to him, I'm sure. Does, does any that's where like Tom Brady, Tom Brady, think about Tom Brady, dude, got a divorce over his love of football. He finally, they think that Giselle left him because he got a, you know, he's just like, I got to do this thing. He's physically, he'll probably die younger than the average human being because oh, yeah. his love of football. And then people criticize him. I haven't done anything in life who never had anyone hate on him and they haven't done anything and they hate on him and they, they feel good about themselves. Think about these, there's these people out there. What did Winston Churchill say? Like if, if, if you don't have haters, like you're doing something wrong. Did he use it's, the term haters? Back probably then? not. If you don't, it's, it was literally like, like if Scoffers. most people like you, like a significant amount of people should dislike what you're saying. Or you're not doing it right. You're not doing it right. Yeah. That's it. That's an interesting point. I know I've always kind of given it up to you because I read the negative stuff when it comes up. Uh, people negative in the comments. And if someone thinks they're smarter than you, which this happens from time to time that they know, I think sometimes they get shown a video and they don't know who you are and they just go, oh, you're not doing it right. It's like this. And they don't know that you have a pretty successful YouTube channel. And so I give them a great, but the people that legit try to attack you as a person and like you're an evil person, I'm like, man, how do you live? Like, not how do you live with that? But it's uncomfortable. Yeah. There's different kinds of comments. There's like, and I, it's hard to really, if you want to attack my doorway method, which gets attacked a lot, I know you just don't understand it. Like, like I, you have to work with a thousand dogs to understand my doorway method. My doorway method is, is the greatest method I have. It's in the last video mm -hmm. and I get where people don't understand it. And then there's other ones where it's just like, I know they're coming from a place of, of, of any amount of correction is tantamount to abuse. Those people, I will try to destroy you. Well, I won't try to, I mean, I'll, I'll comment back and I won't hold back on how big of a, how big of a ideologue you are. Yeah. Like, like, like those are the ones that are just like, you're, you're not coming from a place of trying to learn and not that you need to learn you're coming from a place it's like me going on a positive purely positive one and just attacking them personally in the comments like it's silly insane. yeah i would read these comments and then i'd go back at people i'd be like and then i'd be sitting there at night just like going back at people i'm like i need to do something else with my time besides talk to these people oh because they're not i don't think a lot of them on your other channel no, on your channel. Oh. Yeah, on your channel. And I would do that and I would think, wow, this people these people are just Oh, from you. Yeah, 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 yeah. On my own I gotcha. on my own like yeah, 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 yeah. on my own YouTube account, I would right, go right, at right, them right, and right. be like, "Hey, you don't know what you're talking about." And because they didn't know what they're talking about. And it's like you said about going the doorway method. The people that don't like the doorway method are people that have dogs that pull them down the street on the leash. Yeah. That's what they well, have. Uh, I had one comment like two years ago. It's the only comment that ever made me go, yeah, that I shouldn't say ever, but basically I, it's the one I remember that made me go, yeah, I was wrong. And this guy's right. Do one you remember comment. what it was? 
I remember where I read it. I read it in the dog in the, at the facility in this room. And I remember reading it and it was long. And it, it, in my videos, like there's small mistakes made. Like there's very small, like Prince on this one video that has like a million views, like Prince came rip and down there. Like it was too much. We left it in there because Prince isn't a robot. Like, but it was like, ah, yeah, Prince, Prince needed to chill. Mm -hmm. And this guy, and it was long. And I just envisioned this old man on a mountain with, it had raised 15 dogs over his lifetime. And he was just at one with, and he just kind of spelled it out. And it was just like very sage. And I was like, yeah, he's right. I met, I, I, I messed up at that moment. He wasn't trying to punish you. So to speak. It was, was a, just, it was not nice. He was just trying to school you. He was trying to school me. That's right. But his and heart he, was in the he, right place. I don't know. Yeah, probably. That's the one comment I can remember. And there's been, you know, can you find it for next week? There's no, it? it's two years ago, bro. That'd be epic. It would be impossible. But like that shows you like that, 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 and not to say, I think I'm right all the time. There's just comments aren't going to affect me. They're only going to affect me for, for a very specific reason. I will have had one have messed up. Yeah. And two, it would have to be presented in a way where I know you know more than me. Because if I mess up, I kind of know I messed up. In a video where there's one little part like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. I'll, I'll still put it out there a lot of times. Yeah. What do you think? I'm perfect. Yeah. Well, and sometimes that stuff we know. We've looked at it, we've thought about it, and we're like, yeah, leave keep it, in. it in. Right. It doesn't mess up. Yeah. Or even you're just like, show them and what. And it's slight. But sometimes it's just show them what happened. Right. Yeah. It's not necessarily a teaching thing. It's a, this is what happened in the video. And we're yeah. just, I'm not going to, I'm going to kind of cut it out to make myself look good for just that only, that only reason. Right. Yeah. That would be yeah. weird. I, you know that who came up with the arena poem? Do you know what I'm talking about? No, no idea what you're talking the, about. The, you know, about the the man in the arena, right? It's like the about haters. Oh, man, I wish no I idea. knew this. You don't know about the arena thing? No. Okay. I'm oh, gonna, you know what I'm talking about? He's like whose face is marred. It's, it's not the critic that counts. That's what it is. It's how it starts. Oh, you don't, don't know, know this? I don't know. Do you mind if I read it real quick before? No, go ahead. We could like end off on this. Go ahead. Um, we won't be able to see ourselves here. Hold on. That's okay. We don't need to see ourselves. The arena poem. Okay. Let's see who it's by. This way I can, oh, the man in the arena. Theodore Roosevelt. You ever hey, heard I that already, guy? Didn't I just say Theodore Roosevelt? Or no, I said Winston Churchill. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. The uh, Okay, read it. Okay. The famous quote. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows great enthusiasm, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end of the triumph of high achievement and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who never know victory nor defeat. Oh, it's gr so great. That's harsh, huh? It's so good. Yeah, that's kind of heavy, huh? That's like just try and make mistakes and don't play it safe and you're going to mess up and your face is marred. Like he, 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 he's not just saying like kind of try. And if it, he's like, your Get face is marred Yeah, by the man, you know, it's hardcore. There's yeah. Yeah. It, you're and So that's why, so you've kind of pulled yourself or you just take them with a grain of salt. Cause you probably read 5,000 comments. Yeah, so you're maybe. just not taking it personally or you're yeah. so busy. Yeah. You're just like, Oh, whatever. I mean, generally they don't, yeah, they don't. They don't affect me. You said at the beginning of this podcast, like you believe in what you're doing. You believe your ways, you know, work. Yeah. My ways don't, I don't believe my ways work because uh, I went to school and then I worked with exotics and then I, I read books and then I, my way, I believe my ways work because they were done with thousands of dogs before it ever got put on a video. And, and, and I don't care. I have no agenda. Like I didn't follow a trainer and go, I'm going to do it like him or her. 
I just started to work with dogs and the cream's going to eventually rise to the top. So I believe I'm not perfect, but I believe my, my ways. It's a laboratory. Yeah. It's basically it. the facility was, a yeah, you just kept figuring out what worked, what didn't work. And if something doesn't work, you just discard it, right? You're like, that didn't work. Yeah. It's been discarded a long time ago. Yeah. And I'm not saying every method. I said last week, there are e collars are better for certain things than, than my methods. Mm -hmm. Jumping fences are like, I have no problem with that. Yeah. You're not, it's not a, a religion again, like we said last week. Oh, uh, yeah. It's, yeah. You're not trying to get any converts. Yeah. And there's multiple facets to this. Is it just about the dog being trained or being better? What about the human's happiness? Mm -hmm. What about the dog's happiness? What about their coexistence? What about the husband and wife relationship with with each other? And and the fact that, I mean, you know, uh, raising kids. I said this on like a Facebook post years ago, and even a, another animal trainer I knew disagreed with me. And this is going to rub people the wrong way, rub dog trainers the wrong way. Bro, you can't be a great dog trainer unless you have children. You can't. There's, 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 there's too much. The day to day with children teaches you so much about behavior, and there are high stakes that you you can be a good dog trainer without children. You can't be a great dog trainer without children. I don't believe. You know what's funny about that? ask Caesar Milan that. Does he don't have believe kids? me. Ask Caesar Milan. Does he have kids? Yes, he has kids. Imagine. Know. Do you know how much he's learned from? From his own children, go go ask him. He, uh, there's no doubt he's gonna he's gonna go. Oh my god, uh, there's no doubt. It's just this other level of behavior and knowledge and age appropriateness. It's another level that someone without kids literally doesn't have, and I don't know how they get to that other level. Because it's a without kids, job, right? It's yeah, never it's ending. Well, here's what's funny. And and tell and me proofs in the pudding. You have bad kids, like you you messed up. You have good kids, like you're you're, you're good. You're doing good. And if you're a dog trainer and you have great kids and great dogs, the dog trainer with just great dogs is down here. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how else to say it. That might go into your ethos of like being a good person, doing the right thing, that versus trying to manipulate things to be the way you want them to be that will always bite you versus just like, this is how we're going to treat the dog. This is how we're going to treat the people. Right. But I have a funny question for you. Okay. See if you remember this. So correct me if I'm wrong. Now you did a video, I believe a short three to five minute video with Bosco and Prince footage about being, having to be That's our second biggest video, but it was about, no, but it was about oh. being a parent or having to be, Parent, oh, and then I never posted it. And we changed it. Yeah. To the flex video. Yeah. Which, Isn't that the one? Yeah. And we talked on a Sunday and it came out on a Monday. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. So I made a video. Yeah. And then I, I changed it. And you yeah. never said what you just said tonight, today. That's what, that was what it I was. I think I was going to, I did say that in the video. I showed it to him. He said, I don't think that's the route to go down, which he doesn't really interfere much i make the video i want to do joel does what he wants but 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 you had a good point and like that's not the route for this video it's more about bosco and whatnot but yeah i said that and now so this is the first time that i've and I've it wasn't because i'm some type of genius it's because that body language of bosco and prince was so good that the other thing was the like parental thing didn't fit yeah it just didn't fit yeah. it was it but was, it fits on a podcast yeah it's fun but every now and then it's good because then we'll do like a Joel, the, the shoe will be on the other foot and he'll be like, oh, what about this? Change that. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. When you tell me to change a video, I'll be like. Well, yeah, because I'm sure it's exhausting to have to you know, spend four hours chopping something up. And Bro, it's like, the, what about it's this? It's the worst. And you can sense in my voice. So I make a video. If you want to know the back end, right? Insiders look. Eric watches it for a variety of reasons. And then Eric's like, you should change this. And I'm like, so over it. And like him and I are good friends. And you can just tell my voice. I'm like, I'm like angry at you. I know. I I'm like hear. angry and you're kind of like, you've done a good job of being like, I'm sticking to my guns and I'm like mad. I'm like, okay, bye. <laughs> I think you 
I think you know, like I know you, know, you are only doing it because you feel like you have to. Yeah, and also that. I feel like I'm pretty good at gauging your voice and being like, okay, he's gonna literally explode if I ask him to make any more changes. Or you say, I don't think I can do another edit. Yeah, sometimes I just can't do it. Yeah, I, I, you know, you do a voiceover, another right? voiceover, ten yeah. minutes. It might take, you know, you might mess up or something, and then yeah. I mean, you let it kind of go, but you don't want to redo it. And then you're like, know. Hey, and it's a Saturday, right? You got your kids are at the beach. Yeah. It's like, Nope, record again. Yeah. It could be 5% better. Yeah. But, well, we don't re-record for 5% better. We need, no, we need 20% better video. Substantial. Right. Time, time versus, you know, improving something like it matters, but we're now we're getting into boring stuff. Hey, yeah. no, it's been cool. an hour and 50. Is that our cutoff? That's been, that was a cut. I mean, a I don't, good we don't have a cutoff, but that's around that one. time. So yeah, let's wrap it up. We've got the merch that they could check out. I if said you're interested. crazy stuff in this. Yeah, that's good, bro. That's good. You went after vets in hard in the paint. You basically said, if you don't, if you neuter your dog, you are to be. No, you didn't say that. Of course not. You can neuter your dog. Yeah. Yeah. Pros and cons. Pros and cons. That's life. Decision making is pros and cons. It's all decision making is. Yeah. No, that's Risk great. versus reward. That's it. Yeah, that'll be fun. That'll be no, it was good. It was good. We I think I, I learned more about you. We you get emotional when you watch sports, apparently. Certain no, well, certain montages. Anything nine eleven and sports related, I cry. Okay. All right. Anything. If anyone has a uh, female Doberman. That lives in Southern California. Oh yeah. Give us a holler. We actually found somebody and they said they weren't interested in the comments. I think she knew we were talking about her because it's a lady I met at the dog park years ago. I have a my 100 K video for hundred K. I went to a dog park. I met a lady there. Then I saw her at Costco. She was yeah. the first person to ever recognize me in public. Oh, that's funny. And anyway, I think that was her. And then she commented and she was kind of like, oh, my first one was great, but my second one wasn't. Cause I think she knew we were, because she lives like around here we were we were just hinting i don't even know if we were talking about her but like but well yeah. that's cool she's watching the podcast yeah now we're fully talking about her yeah she knows well, who she is well if you change your mind and are interested well she said the dog wouldn't be great for it i think she said it wasn't that big i think she and maybe the temperament wasn't that's perfect wasn't good. That's yeah fair. which is fine people the person's got to be into it yeah so leave your comments in on this video if you want us to read them and check them for the next video for the podcast so that is this is the end of six yeah we're coming back next tuesday and they're going to be posted at 5 a.m thursday um pacific time yeah you shouldn't say when like what if we don't post it at five and we have to be a man of our word okay so 5 a.m thursdays sounds good man all right we'll see you all next week